Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Rules of Engagement, a show brought to you by MLG. Of course, your host, as always, is me, Nick Axlav Ranish. This show will air every weekday, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Each day of the week is a different, unique theme for you guys. Let's take a look at some of those themes right now. Every Monday is going to be Talking Tactics. That's where we take a look at professional-level games and analyze the way they're playing. Every Tuesday, Developing Fundamentals. That's taking a look at the core skill sets that are used in competitive StarCraft II. How you can check to make sure you have those skill sets down. How you can improve those skill sets. And how you can appreciate uh, when you watch people who have those skill sets down at such a high level. Wednesday, Mechanics of the Bazaar. That's again professional level replays, but this time replays where they do things a little bit crazy, a little bit bizarre. Thursday, Community Critique. That's your chance back at home to get your, your replays looked at on air. Go to MajorLeagueGaming.com slash replays. Fill out the form, submit your, re your replays. I'll check them out uh, and I'll analyze them on air and critique them and etc. Uh, we're also going to all pretty much mostly trying to get the Heart of the Storm stuff now. So uh, Thursday, if you have a Heart of the Storm replay, great. If you don't, still send it, even if it's Wings of Liberty, because uh, there's a good chance I'll check it out as well, depending on how many Heart of the Storm, uh, Heart of the Storm replays I get. Friday, it's Day of Self-Reflection. That's where I take a look at my own games, analyze them, uh, discuss the mistakes I made, the things I did well, and techniques you can use to win even if you don't have incredible hand speed or uh, super hand-eye coordinated. Uh, so Friday's a great day as well. You can uh, take a look at me making fun of myself a little bit in some of those days. All these shows are at 7 p.m. Eastern. All these shows have a question and answer period at the end of the show. So feel free at any time during the day or week, tweet me questions at ISAXLAV, and I'll pick out a couple of those to answer at the end of the show. So let's jump into today. It's going to be Tuesday, Developing Fundamentals. Uh, today, I actually want to go over, because we're switching over Harder Swarm, a lot of you guys may be pre-ordering StarCraft 2, which comes with the beta, or maybe you've won a beta in many of our MLG beta key giveaways, and you're exploring this new game, but you're not sure how to get started. So I'm going to go through just an introductory build for all you guys for each race, very general, you can use it in all the matchups, uh, just, just to get you started on how to really play a game of StarCraft 2 in Harder Swarm. And then, of course, we're going to end it up with a question and answer period. So let's first talk about the One Gate Sentry Expand as Protoss. So for all, all these builds, we're going to look at basically first look at the strengths of the build, then the potential follow-ups, and then the most general follow-up you can do where it's kind of like, uh, it, it, it's like a one reaction fits all type thing. It may not always be the most optimal, but uh, you can do it and be okay no matter what your opponent does. So let's jump into this first game. It's going to be uh, of a Protoss. And this is just me playing the AI, going through the build just to let you guys know what's important with it. So of course you get the pylon at 9, and I like to put the pylon as close to my nexus as possible, so I lose the least amount of mining time having that probe get off minerals, build the pylon, and get back. But the idea is you want to get a pylon at 9. As you go forward, constant chrono boost on nexus, right? This nexus should always be chrono boosted. It's very, very, very important to always have this nexus chrono boosted. Uh, your first five Chrono Boosts back to back to back should all be on a Nexus with this one gate sensor expand. I mean, a yeah, little bit of downtime there in the pro production. Not optimal, but still okay. In the instant I get 25 more energy, I should be Chrono Boosting probes yet again. There I go. So constant, constant, constant Chrono Boost on that Nexus. And then, of course, you want to get a second pylon. And this one I'm going to put at the ramp because sometimes you're going to make a wall off, sometimes you don't. Uh, can't hurt to put the second one up by that ramp. Let's see, warp guys in. Uh, and you want your warp ins to be able to be right where your army is. And your army is typically going to be defending the ramp, so you want to be able to warp units in there, so get that second pylon over there by the ramp. And then you want to get uh, your cybernetics core, and then you're going to follow that up with another gas geyser shortly thereafter. And remember, constant chrono boost on probes. I should be chrono boosting probes right about now. There I go. A couple seconds safe, but constant, constant, constant chrono boost on probes, at least until your cybernetics core is done with the one gate sentry expand. Uh, so then you get your second gas, and as, as, uh, then you get a zealot as soon as you get the second gas. And then the zealot should finish slightly after the psychor finishes. When the psychor finishes, go ahead and get warp gate and queue up a sentry. And then what you're going to do from here on out is non-stop pro production, non-stop sentry production, and build pylons as needed. Those are the things you want to do. Now let's talk about some of the strengths of this build. Uh, actually, before I get to that, uh, one thing to point out, you, you build non-stop sentries, non-stop probes. In fact, I'm actually cutting probes a tiny bit here, but uh, for you at home, you might want to just build non-stop. As soon as you have 400 minerals, 
go ahead and build yourself that nexus. It should be around 30 food, maybe 32 food, but you want to get that nexus as soon as you have that extra 400 minerals. Uh, and then you, you keep your production tab open. Constant probes and sentries should be going on in there. If not probes, get that mothership core. I like to get it right after I start the nexus. If you get it too early, it delays the nexus. But you do want to get it relatively soon so that it can start building up energy, which would then be useful uh, to help defend. And when that mothership core pops out, we can talk a little, about, a little bit about some of its abilities to help you defend so well. The most obvious of its abilities is the fact that it has an attack and it can fight. <laughs> so if you look at this mothership core, you can notice it has an attack over here at the bottom. You can scroll over there and see what that attack actually does. And then, of course, amongst other abilities, once it has 100 energy, you can uh, photon overcharge your nexus, and your nexus can fight off attackers as well. So the whole idea behind this build is that uh, it combines a strong economy with great scouting. An economy, you're like, sure, it's a strong economy. You expand it at 30 food. That's very good. But uh, where do you see that great scouting? Well, the great scouting is because in Heart of the Swarm, something you guys uh, may not have, have noticed yet, is that your sentries start with hallucination. You don't have to research it. They start with it. So uh, very early on in the game, you can go ahead and make a hallucinated phoenix. As soon as you get uh, 100 energy, I burned the force field there just kind of joking around. Uh, but as soon as you get 100 energy on a phoenix, or on a, sorry, on a sentry, you can hallucinate a phoenix. And now all of a sudden, you've got this really cool early scouting tool. So the sentries are very cheap on minerals, which is great because you want to be spending your minerals on nexuses and probes. So they're very cheap on the minerals. They're very great at defending. You can force field your ramp against aggression. And also, they're great at scouting. So they're great at everything. Mass a lot of sentries. They're great at everything, early game. And then your scout can tell you, do I need to worry about attack or not, etc. But uh, the idea of the opening is, it's great scouting, great defense, great economy, great at everything, except for attacking early on. But attacking early on is overrated anyway. So now there's a couple of potential follow-ups. The first thing you always want to do, actually let's back this up just a bit here. Maybe a little bit more. Here we go. So the, the thing you, you always want to do is you always want to add in two more gateways. And the reason why it's very important to add in these two extra gateways is so if your scout tells you you're under pressure and maybe uh, you need to warp in some extra guys, you can do so, right? You gotta have three warp gates at your disposal. Sure, initial pressure can often be held off by the Mothership Core with its uh, Photon Overcharge, but that will run out. And so you need to be able to keep warping in guys to keep up with your opponent. Very important to add those two warp gates to make sure you have a, a decent ability to warp in units as needed. And now there's several follow-ups here. So after you start these two warp gates, you've got a bunch of options. You can add like three to eight more gateways, or go up to you know somewhere between four to eight gateways. Add a ton of gateways. You could do that. And then you could go and attack once they complete. So right here, you could just stop building probes, build nothing but gateways, and just go attack once they complete, keep orbiting units in on the way. You've probably seen this if you watch pro-level games, massive gateway-based attacks early on in the game, hitting by maybe the eight-minute mark. Uh, maybe 8.30, depending on, on the actual build. And this, this idea is just you be really aggressive, utilize the fact that you can warp in units once you have a pylon, you can warp in units right here, right in their face. Uh, very, very, very powerful if you have a lot of gateways. So that's a good follow-up. Another good follow-up is you can go for Stargate tech, or you can go for a fast Colossus and try to do some sort of uh, Colossus rush. But the most general follow-up, the one that I, I want to encourage you guys to do as you're just exploring the game, is like the catch-all follow-up. And for that one, what you're going to do is you're going to get a single robotics that lets you build observers, uh, immortals, Colossi. Well, mostly the observer early on, so you don't have to worry about cloak. Just like a good general building to have. And then you're going to get two forges. So as soon as you get the money, add it in this first forge and then probably second one shortly thereafter. And what this does is this allows you to invest in a strong late game, right? When you're talking about investing in a strong late game, you either want to tech or get upgrades. So if you got, let's say, going for Storm or, or uh, Colossi, those could be ways to invest in strong late game too. But if you go to double forges, you're investing in a strong late game without making a tech commitment. So you can wait and see what they do. If they're massing air, you'll want to get storm and feedback probably. If they're massing um, like a lot of ghosts, you're going to want to get you know, a bunch of call side. So getting to upgrades first allows you to kind of delay your tech choice un until you can react to what they're seeing and the strength of your late game at the same time. So it's a great kind of general type of follow-up you can do is just go ahead, get that robotics for the observer. And the observer you can use to, to 
keep scouting them without having to burn all your uh, hallucination energy. And then you follow up with two, two forges. And as you go on, then you can choose however you want to play it out to play it out. Remember though, to try to keep making probes constantly, and then uh, just keep these forges upgrading as much as, you, as much as possible. And the other thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you get the cybernetics core, as you fast forward here. As these forges near about two-thirds of the way done, you want to go ahead and get this, this Twilight Council. Sorry, I said Cybernetics Core, I meant Twilight Council. Because that allows you to continue getting upgrades and try to keep ahead in these upgrades. And, and also, it allows you to, be, uh, to choose your tech path. You can go for Templar now easily by adding Twilight Council. Or I could add in a Support Bay and go for Colossi. Let, you let the gas build up a little bit because that will all be used once you get your tech in. So this game, I'm going to go for Templar. So I'm going to end up spading that gas on Storm and High Templar and, of course, the upgrades as well. But all this stuff, you can play it out, have fun, do whatever you want. The most important thing is to know the basic build, which we're going to go back and go over that really quickly for you guys. That's you get your gateway, you get your gas, you get your second pylon, then you get your cybernetics core, then you get your, your second gas, and then from there on out, constant probe and sentry production. You get a bunch of uh, probes, or you get a bunch of probes, right? You should have a lot of probes. Get a bunch of sentries, so you have a lot of sentries, and then you expand, right? And that the expansion should be started very early in the game, around 30 to 32 food. And from there on out, add in two more gateways, and then you, you, you're good to go, basically. Use a hallucination from the sentry to scout whatever you want to see. And then from there on out, basically 40, 50 food plus, you can make your own build orders uh, or, or watch a pro replay and take some of their advice. But the general idea is you got to get that nexus down early, and you got to have those sentries there, both for defense on the ramp and also for scouting. So you jump in your new heart game of Hardest War and Protoss, just think of two things. Early centuries, early expansion, a lot of early probes. Three things, excuse me. Always a lot of early probes. So keep those in mind, you'll do fine. Uh, that wraps it up this segment on a Protoss build you can use against all the races. We'll take a quick break and be right back with our next replay. It's going to be over a Terran build.